Hello and welcome back to Redirecting. I'm going to be sharing a very interesting story with you. Uh, thanks to Brother Bryant, David Bryant, for sharing this with me. Um, I'm going to read some, some of the article and then I will follow up with some of my own words as well. But anyway, it says that wildlife activists are outraged as Zimbabwe's president offers land and national parks to Chinese investors. Matur Zimbabwe, wildlife and environmental activists are expressing outrage that the Zimbabwean government is offering land in national wildlife parks to Chinese investors for the construction of golf courses. Mm. In May, President Emerson Managawa promised a group of more than 300 Chinese business people and investors who were on a five-day visit to Zimbabwe that he would offer them land in the country's national parks to develop golf courses. He says, and I quote, The lovers of golf, if there are any here among the group of Chinese visitors, I offer you land in the national parks so that you, as you play golf, you can be mixing with elephants and lions. Managua said to this group in the capital, Harar. Managua offers to the Chinese investors his offers enraged environment and wildlife activists. Sharon Hool, a Zimbabwean animal rights activist with a UK based group, Bring Back Our Rhinos, told the Epic Times that giving land in national parks to the investors would be a disaster for the parks. Mike Hitchman, a renowned environmentalist and wildlife expert who runs the wildlife sanctuary Cecil Cop Nature Reserve, said that China, Chinese have a very bad global reputation when it comes to animal welfare, conservation of wildlife and the environment, and environmentally acceptable extraction of natural resources. Since the Chinese neo-colonial invasion of Africa, the whole continent is being abused like never before, Hitchman told the Epoch Times. Forests are being decimated, wildlife trafficking of endangered species, and their widespread mining activities are conducted without any impact assessments being carried out and zero rehabilitation of the mine sites. <clears throat> Several Chinese nationals have been accused of wildlife poaching in Zimbabwe in recent times. Earlier this year, seven Chinese nationals were arrested in the resort town of Victoria Falls for possessing 20 kilograms of rhino horns worth up to $1 million. In 2013, a Chinese citizen was arrested at Robert Mugabe International Airport, the Harar International Airport, with 17 pieces of raw ivory a few weeks after news emerged that elephants were poisoned with cyanide by poachers in Zimbabwe's National Park. Now, I'm going to leave it right there because there's a lot more to this article, and I kind of wanted to expound on all of these accusations that are being hurled at the Chinese. Now, I don't doubt that they are doing these things, but I, I think it sounds kind of interesting that... <clears throat> They're talking about all of the damage that the Chinese have done in Africa on the continent. And uh, they are failing to remember or discuss the damage that Europeans have done. Now, I don't know if these activists are um, citizens of Africa, um, if they're people that live on Africa or were born there, or if they're outsiders. Uh, one thing that said it was a U.K. or a, a, a British firm or something uh, gives an indication that it's probably some outsiders involved in all of this. OK, and so when you think of it in those terms, they don't like other people coming in uh, to destroy African land. They're like, uh, leave that up to us. Let us do all of the stealing of the resources. Uh, let us do all of the uh, mistreatment of the citizens, not you. OK, and that's the sense that I get when I um, see that other people or outsiders are the ones who um, are possibly the ones that are upset by this. Of course, we know that there are probably 
uh, some Africans that are upset as well. But for the most part, it is probably outsiders who are bringing this to the forefront in the way that we are seeing it right now. Now, I think it's interesting, too, that Zimbabwe is doing this because Zimbabwe's economy has been suffering for a very long time. I talked about this earlier in a video where uh, Zimbabwe has been hit with all kinds of sanctions because they decided that they wanted to return lands back to the original inhabitants. And so they've been hit with sanctions and uh, their economy has literally been crippled. And when you see an offer like this being put on the table for them, uh, you can look at it a number of different ways. Now, most people would say, oh, okay, the president is a sellout because um, he is doing this and he's selling national park land to the Chinese. And some people would say that he's doing what he feels he needs to to boost the economy in Zimbabwe. So it can be looked at from a number of different angles. But the bottom line is this. It goes back to what I and many others say all the time that our people are not really truly controlling anything in Africa. Uh, they are in need of aid. They're in need of um, um, outside investors. And that's exactly what the Chinese are doing. They are taking advantage of a situation that they know the people of Zimbabwe are in because their economy has been crippled. And so here the Chinese come. They're like, OK, we will come in, swoop in and save the day. And you will be beholden to us because of it. That debt will keep us there. Um, as long as the debt is there, we will be there. And knowing, knowing that um, many countries around Africa are borrowing exuberant amounts of money from the Chinese, I doubt whether they'll be going anywhere anytime soon. And so right now you hear a lot of fussing and complaining uh, from people talking about what the Chinese are doing on the continent. Um, a lot of which comes from Europeans. And it's not that they care about Africa or the people of Africa. It's nothing like that. They care about the fact that someone else is doing what they have already done. That's all this is. It's another land grab, power grab. It's another snatch at dominion on the continent of Africa. It continues to be taken away from the indigenous populations of Africa and given to another. That is what we are seeing happen. And so when I saw that um, investors were upset about this whole deal uh, with Zimbabwe um, offering national park land to Chinese investors, I mean, I, I can only look at it, you know, from the perspective of the Zimbabwean people at this time. Of course, we all know that none of this is a good idea. Whenever foreign nationals or international investors come into Africa, to buy up things or to give loans to improve the infrastructure, we know that that is the further diminishing of the power of our people. Notice I said the further diminishing, meaning that the power of our people has already been diminished on the continent. This is just the furthering of that, okay? But it goes back again to the fact that our people are not truly running anything. I mean, even from behind the scenes, you can see that our hands are literally limited on what we're able to do on the continent. Even though our people are there, they are limited by what Europeans and Asians and all these other groups will allow them to do because Africa is living on borrowed soil. They're living on borrowed everything because these people are literally buying up the continent. Uh, they're building infrastructure. They're giving loans and cr creating debt. And so the people of Africa are literally being held hostage by the debt that they owe to these other nations. Held hostage. And so I, I see this as, you know, I see it two ways. I see it as a sad day because, again, it's the further diminishing of our power or our people's power on the continent of Africa. Okay. And then I see it as... Um, a bailout situation to where the people of Zimbabwe are like, look, the, the governments of Zimbabwe are like, look, our economy is crippled right now. And any injection of cash 
is going to be well welcomed. That's the I'm just looking at it how I believe that others would see things, okay? It's not that I am endorsing doing this because I don't think it's a good idea for um, Africa to continue to be carved into, bought and sold by people who can't stand the people of Africa, you see? So everyone has their own little agenda as it relates to the continent. Everyone has their own little agenda. And maybe someday um, we will see some changes that will amount to something significant. Because right now these little minor changes um, here and there are not really something that we can jump and cheer about. Um, especially when many of the changes that we see on the continent are still funded by people of other nations. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and end the video right here. Thanks again to uh, Brother David for sharing this video or this story with me, should I say. Um, um, if you all want to look at the whole story um, and see what else the Chinese are up to in Zimbabwe, um, the link will be in the description area. And with that, I will say Shalom.